Hello everyone and welcome again to Get In Depth. First of all, I would like to apologize for our belated response and updates. Uh, in the meantime, we have been working pretty hard on accumulating our team and getting the content ready in the and uh, structuring them to present to yourselves to the best way possible and and to help you in the best way to uh, secure a good rank and score. Uh, so, but still, we apologize for the responses. And uh, but but now on from now on, we will be pretty regular as you already have seen that my friend Akash has already uploaded a video on discrete mathematics and I am now completing today the uh, incomplete session of theory of computation of gate questions of this year and from now on we will be pretty much regular we will be giving updates on our next contents and we will be helping you with problem sessions uh, uh, various questions typical concepts some tricks and uh, some uh, intuitive ways to understand concepts and many things uh it, it's it's a kind of surprise so let's see what comes next and for now let us just uh, complete the session well yeah so this was the next question which of the following is or are undecidable well it was an msq of uh, two marks and let us just analyze the question given two turing machines m1 and m2 decide if l1 equal l of m1 equals to l of m2 well, this is a problem of equivalence and it is undecidable. Let me say why. Because we are all aware of the halting problem of Turing machine. So, if we, if we want to compare the languages accepted by two Turing machines, so we need to be sure about every string that gets either accepted or rejected in either of the Turing machines. But as halting problem it no, is not decidable so we cannot be sure about each and every string hence um, this is definitely undecidable the next one given a turing machine m1 if l of, l of m1 is regular it is regularity problem and it is also undecidable well we can say that by uh, rises first let us see from the chomsky hierarchy that i am skipping all the other languages and pardon my Venn diagram. So, if it is recursively enumerable language, then regular language is a subset of that. And so, any recursively enumerable language can be either recursively enumerable but not regular, or it can be regular also. So, being regular is not a trivial property for a recursively enumerable language. And hence, we know that by uh, Rice's theorem that any non-trivial property of a recursively enumerable language is not decidable. Hence, it is also undecidable. The next one, given a Turing machine M, decide if M accepts all the strings. This is known as uh, totality or some may say universality. And it is also undecidable. Undecidable because as we have already discussed from the last two points that uh, halting problem needs to be decidable to understand the fate of each and every string that we present as input in the Turing machine. Hence, it is not decidable. Okay. And coming to the last one, given a Turing machine M, decide if M takes more than 1073 steps on every string. Well, let me solve it with a bit intuitive way. Okay. So, this actually is decidable. Let me show how. Well, say to accept a string w, say say there is a string w belongs to L of m such that length of w is n. To accept the string w, it has to pass through at least n steps in the Turing machine. So, this is necessary. Hence, let us say we check all the strings of length 1073 and none of the strings. Okay, repeat after me and remember my word that none of the strings of length 1073 or less, uh, I'm sorry, not less, of length 1073 stops before moving 1073 uh, production loops or 1073 steps. So, in that case, say we can say that any other string set W1 belongs to L of M where length of W1 greater than or equals to 1073 such that so the w1 can be written as w v concatenated with v here w is string of length 
as we just discussed 1073 and v can be anything v can be any string so i mean if we check all the strings of length 1073 then for every other string greater than uh, length 1073 that a, any string of length 1073 can act as a prefix it can be a prefix and then can there can be another string or another part uh, concatenated with that to form the uh, greater length string right so in that case to pass the string w1 we have to pass it through turing machine and turing machine will first compute for the first w length string and we know that we already have checked that all the strings of length 1073 does not stop before 1073 steps and if this is true then we can conclude that for every other w1 it, it will also take more 1073 or more steps right so we can conclude that and if we know that there is any a string of length 1073 that stops before 1073 then uh, uh, there is no point of that so yes this is design okay so let's move to the next question So, it was another two mark question as I presume and it was also an MSQ and yes, yeah, so read the question. Consider the following languages L1 equals to WW and W belongs to Sigma star. Well, it is a context sensitive language. Uh, I mean CSL but not CFL. Let me say why because we know that um, CFL comes with because CFL computes with PDA and PDA is basically states plus stack and through a stack we cannot compute this because let me say this is a stack and we want to compute say 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 the string ww here is abb ab okay and now when we are trying to compute it through a stack say we will check the first w part and we will input a then b then b but when we want to check uh, with the latter part if this is the same then we will pop from the stack but we will come out as b b a because we know that what is stack stack is a leaf last in first out so it is not computable in the same way w if it was w and w r then it would have been cf uh, cf but it is not the case hence it is csl context sensitive language okay the next one l2 is a to the power n b to the power n c to the power n well this is intriguing say it say we are computing a cube b cube c to the power seven. Now, if we say check one thing that a to the power n, if we can write it like this a to the power p, b to the power q, c to the power r with the condition that p equals to q, right? This is the same thing that here the power of c is m, but there is no constraint of m that it is not related with any other power, it is just an integer, a natural number. So, it can be anything, right? So, in this case, we are not considered about this r. It can be anything and talking about these two that power of a and b has to be same so p equals to b this is the condition so here when we are taking the an example say a, a, c to the power 7 or it can be anything we are not at all bothered about that so when we are accepting this language whatever the power of c is what whatever the number of c uh, is in the input we are not at all bothered about that just ignore the fact okay and uh, here it says that uh, m greater than equals to 0 so m can be 0 so c, there can be c or cannot be or there can be any numbers of c just ignore that we are not at all bothered about that and we just want to check that the number of a's and b's has to be same that is our concern okay and so we are uh, whenever a comes pushing into the stack and whenever a stops say b uh, starts coming so pop each a and check with b if the numbers of a and b are same because when when the b stops coming we will check if the stack is empty if the stack is empty so there has to be the same number of a's and b's it's okay fine we are ready to accept it as cfl okay and it is indeed dcf because we you know uh, we are not at all confused about when uh, when to stop pushing and start popping we're not confused because as far as a comes we'll push and as far as b comes we'll pop that's it simple so we are absolutely sure about uh, till when to push and when start popping and what to pop how many everything is clear in this con context so it is deterministic context really. In the next one, a to the power m, b to the power n, c to the power n. It's the same case. This is this is uh, say a to the power p, b to the power q, and c to the power r. Okay. In this case, c to the power r. And our concern is here q equals to r. We're not bothered about p, right? Yeah, a to the power m. So m can be anything. We're not bothered about that. We will check for b and c. The same explanation as here. 
say a to the power 5, b to the power 4, c to the power 4. Just ignore it. As, till a comes, just ignore. And as b comes, push. And as c comes, pop. And we will check in the stack. That's it. Simple. So it is also a DCFL, right? Now the question comes, okay? Which of the following statements is or are false? Okay, so we are marking the false ones. L1 is con is not context free. L1 is not context free. Yes, this is true. L but L2 and L3 are deterministic context free. Yes, this is also true. So we are not marking this one, okay? Com because this is completely true statement. The next one, neither L1 nor L2 is context free. Well, um, neither L1, I'm sorry, neither L1 nor L2 is context free. L1 is uh, not context free, L2 is context free, L2 is DCFL and we know that from Chomsky hierarchy, let me remind you once again, uh, say this is CFL, the, the subset there is DCFL and CSL is a superset. So L2 and L3 belongs here, L2 and L3 belongs here and L1 belongs here. So they are saying neither L2 nor L uh, L1 is context free. L1 is not context free, but L2 is context free. So the this is a uh, false part of the set statement and the complete statement is false. The next one, L2, L3 and L2 intersection L3 are all context free. Well, L2, L3 context free. Let me check about L2 intersection L3. Okay? We change the color. Yeah. So they are talking about L2 intersection L3. Well, um, here in this case, a to the power p, b to the power q, and c to the power r. To get that L2 intersection L3, we have to apply both the conditions, right? So p equals to q and q equals to r. So the language becomes a to the power n, b to the power n, c to the power n. This is a context sensitive language because when we are computing in the stack, we will check, for, say, as far as a comes, we will input, I mean, push in the stack. Then as, as b starts coming, we will pop from the stack and match with the is but now say say these are same so the stack is empty and a and b's are gone now this c starts coming but it is not ignorable the power of c has to be matched with the power of a's and b's but they are all gone they are have already passed to, through the stack so we cannot compute that and it doesn't have any memory to store the values hence it is not computable through push down automata it is a context sensitive language this one a context sensitive language okay so this is also a false statement. The last one, neither L1 nor its complement is, I'm sorry for this. Okay, neither L1 nor its complement is context free. Well, L1 is not context free definitely, but there is a trick, okay? Uh, for now, I want you all to remember this because this uh, proving this can be very rigorous. So I'm just uh, requesting you all to remember and eventually when you practice a lot in theory of computation, you will know that how uh, how uh, these these tricks work and uh, probably someday we'll even get to prove that so the fact is as you already know that the language ww is context sensitive language but its complement is a context free language that is ww complement is context free language on the same way as where the language we discussed here where is it was yeah so a to the power n, b to the power n, c to the power n, a to the power n, b to the power n, c to the power n. It is context sensitive language, but its complement is a context free language. Well, it is quite easy to prove, which we may do in another video. Because see, there are two conditions, uh, uh, two conditions with and statement, right? P, P equals Q and Q equals to R. So it changes when we are complementing it, it changes to P not equals to Q or Q not equals to R, simple Boolean algebra. And this can be done by an NPD. Hence, it is context free language. It is easy to prove, which may we do in another video. But this is a very important point you need to remember. That is, uh, the complement of this language is a context free language. Hence, the statement is con con complement of this is context free. Uh, and its complement uh, is context free. Neither. It says neither. It is false. Because its complement is context free. Hence, it is also false statement. So the answer is A, I'm sorry, uh, B, C and D. This is the answer.